Okay, four more AC units to go. So I did this preventative maintenance last year. I did not have to replace one single condenser unit, the whole thing, or one single compressor. And you can see a lot of my units are original units, 30 years old, 30 plus years old, and some of them are newer units. So this particular roof has about half and half, half original, half newer. Um, I've had about just as much trouble with new units as I have my original units. So some of you are probably wondering how come I don't just replace the unit. Well, um, the reason is they just don't make them like they used to. My older units outlast the newer units. And um, the other side of that is that the industry has changed from R22. Uh, phasing out R22 in 2020, supposed to be. And what they've been going with is these 14 series units that are R410A. Well, the rumor is that even R410A will eventually be phased out. So, it, to me, it just is annoying to go with something that is eventually going to be phased out. So, uh, since there's not uh, a good enough alternative yet for replacing new units, I'm not changing if I can avoid it. So I'm going to discharge my capacitors here. Capacitors hold a charge in it even after the power is disconnected. So I'm bridging the leads with the metal portion of the screwdriver. I'm holding only the insulated portion, making sure I'm not touching anything. And then I can safely work on the unit. For testing the capacitors, these are this one's a 40 plus 5. It makes a connection inside the capacitor to the common side for the fan on these dual capacitors that have three separate and sets of prongs. The compressor. And so we're disconnecting the start of the fan and the start of the compressor. And then we can test between those leads. We don't have to disconnect the common side. And we can also test the hard start kit. Hard start kit should be between 45 and 50 on these on this particular brand of hard start kit for microfluids. So here we go for the common to hum. We're looking for 40, 37.25. So 40 by 25 would be 38 would be good. We're just a tiny bit weak. And for the five, uh -oh. four point one five. So that's weak as well. So we need a new forty slash five on this one. Now, some people would, if you're a traditional AC guy, you're going to be doing things a little bit different. You would be asking your customer, "Is this? Uh, do you want to replace this? This is a little bit weak." Uh, I'd like to prevent you a no cool call in the middle of the center. Do you want to replace it? And here would be the charge. I'm an AC guy, or a, I'm a maintenance guy, a building maintenance guy. So I'm at liberty to pick what to replace and not replace. And for me, I'm just replacing this. It's no charge to anybody except for the, the owner of the building. So and I'm given a budget to work within. My capacity, my hard start kit is 45, 45 so that's good. But I'm going to be changing this hard start, um, I'm going to be changing this capacitor. Like I said, I have some liberty in the budget that I have, and I, my opinion is it's much cheaper to replace a capacitor than it is to replace a compressor. And by staying up on this preventative maintenance, I'm preventing strain on the fan motor, strain on the on the compressor, and so by keeping that strain away, prolonging the life of the equipment, and that's what's going to save the most money. So again, back to why aren't I replacing units? Well, it's to save money, and also to keep uniformity in my units. All my units right now are R22 units. Been, some of them I've been converting to L99 when I have uh, 
lesser replacements that don't require the uh, R410 unit for new condenser units. So if I have to replace an evaporator coil or a compressor, I can just recover the R22, save it for my other units, and recharge it with MO99, which is what I've been going with. There's, a, you know, again, a lot of variations on opinion and schools of thought, but in my opinion, that's the, that's been the route that, I, that I've chosen that I think is going to give me the most longevity and be the best for um, all parties involved. And uh, so that's a bit, little bit of the backstory. Here's a 40 slash 5, new one on Titan Pro. Um, I also like hard start kits. It's another school of thought. A lot of guys do not like hard start kits. On some of the premium air conditioner units, they come with hard start kits installed. You see them on Yorks. In my opinion is it, is it minimizes the stress on the unit. So this one's got a little bit different profile. You can change the screw hole. Sometimes I'll just take this and give it a little bit of a twist because I need a place for the hard start kit anyway. So once I make this in a good way, I just don't want to bend the fastener to change it a little bit. But here we go. Now I'm good. Now I've got a place to hang my hard start kit. Our commons are here. I would have liked to not. Push. It's better to take out the capacitor first and I kind of pinched it a little bit there. That's no, not good. But we'll verify this works and no problem. And we should be good. I would have liked to not have done that. <laughs> but don't live in a perfect world. It is what it is. So here's our hard start kit. All our leads are nice and tight. The other thing I did last year was go and tighten all my leads. So I don't need to do that again this year. I'll probably do that about once every four to five years. Go through and tighten all the leads. Go through and tighten all the incoming power leads. And then tighten all the leads at the disconnect boxes. I do that about every four or five years. Um, if it was one unit I'd w I was working on, I probably only had a small number of units. I would just do that every year. But I got a lot of units to work on, so uh, in the interest of time, I'm focusing more this year on the inside. Want to focus more on the inside units, but I'm definitely wanting to get ahead of these units first, so uh, the outside portion before it gets hot. So, um, what I like to do for my preventative maintenance is every year I pick a different um, area to focus on. Last year I went through, tightened all the leads, and checked all the capacitors. This year I'm going through and checking all the capacitors and riveting or fixing the fan baffles, and then going after um, the indoor units and checking all the indoor capacitors because those are something that they don't wear out as much, but it just they don't get checked as often either. This one I'll discharge the capacitor. The capacitor holds a charge in it even after the power is disconnected. So I'm bridging the leads with the metal portion of the screwdriver holding the insulated portion. And it's just a quick deal to cancel the charge. So this now I'm disconnecting the start wires. I've got a 40 plus 5 on this unit. And we're checking all. Okay, okay like for a test. Common to fan and common to home. This is a 40 slash 5. So there's our 40, 39.21, that's good. And there's our 5, 4.93, that's good. Our start wire back up. Fan wire back up. 
and then for the hard start kit, should be right around 45, 45, 50. Forty-seven. That's good. Okay. Now I can plug my disconnects back in and verify the unit works, and then I've got two units to go. Found so far about five problems that could have caused no AC calls, and found a sixth one that just making a noise so, but, I, but I can do like, get estimates on that no one's complained about it at, the, at this point but this way I can get ahead of it and not have it tackle me when I've got other things going on so, I'm a big fan of getting ahead of things so preparation is key what you want is to be covered Alright, here we go. Check on the unit, working good. What you want, we're all, every person is going to face the judgment of God and we're all appointed one us to die and then the judgment. But God made a way for us to be saved, for us to be righteous through Jesus Christ who took upon himself the sins of the world and was crucified rest took sins upon himself. Three days later, he rose again, defeating death and the grave. He took the judgment of God upon himself so that we could be spared and have eternal life through him. He is, the Lord says that without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. And God took it on himself to take the judgment. God is holy our sins have separated us from God, and in order to maintain His holiness and still receive us, He redeemed us by His blood, by His life. He took the judgment that His holiness requires on Himself, he took the pain that would have been for us on Himself, and redeemed us. Adam, basically, uh, and he they listened to the serpent in the garden and they ate from the tree they weren't supposed to and sin passed on to the whole human race everybody's sin comes short of the glory of God and, but God loves us and wants a relationship with each of us individually you gotta listen to what Jesus has to say for yourself he said if you continue in my glory then are you my disciples you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And He is the truth, and we need, we need to receive the love of the truth so that we don't get deceived or get tricked or double-crossed. There's a lot of delusion out there. There's a lot of people that have misrepresented misrepresented Jesus, come in His name, or saying that He is Jesus, and then teaching bad things, false things, and the gospel has been misrepresented. God has been misrepresented, which is the plan of the enemy who wants to steal from you and steal from God what is God's and to take away the, uh, the fact that God loves you. He wants to, to blind you in some other way to make you think that either you have to be religious and try to earn your way into heaven or to think that you don't need God at all. But the fact is, we all need God. We need life. We need eternal life. And we need His instruction. To, to, uh, to, he designed us. He knows what makes us tick. He knows what's going to give us the best life and a whole life. And there's so many things that are going to steal away from your life. And masquerade as being fun. And that's the way that's being good. And, but the truth is good all the way. So we need to seek out the truth. We need to have protection from deception. And we get that by continuing in God's Word, in His Word, the Bible. 
nothing extra, no extra writings, just the Word of God uh, that we can grow by the Word and understand and be protected from the delusions and deceptions that are out there. These units are good to go. Ooh. Mm -hmm.